Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek. This is a very exciting episode for me because today, today, finally, after nearly a year, <laughs> or I guess what feels like a year, more like nine months of anticipation, today we are finally going to start to transform this piece of dirt that I put here into my dream workshop. This has been a long, long time coming. So, I'm super excited. Today we're gonna finally get this thing off the ground. I got all the building materials here on the ground now, and the builders are on their way. I think I might even hear them coming down the driveway. So I'll bring you back when we get started. Well, 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 we finally got some building materials showed up here. I think we're actually gonna get us a building built. Getting corners all laid out here. Things are things are gonna be going up here. We're gonna be drilling holes here very quickly. guys are working quick they're getting ahead of me they already got the third hole drilled there they're working on this is what's called a pole barn so we're just sinking poles in the ground but these poles are pretty special the advantage of the pole barn is that it's cheap er nothing's cheap these days but it's cheaper because you don't have to do any uh, foundation work the poles are your foundation the downside of that usually is that the poles will tend to rot off at ground level. So these posts here um, supposedly have a lifetime warranty. Hopefully it's not one of those lifetime warranties that uh, the company's gone before you ever get to try to claim your lifetime warranty. But basically they dip these in like a butyl rubber compound and then they put a heavy wrap on them and that gets you above grade with the posts. And all the lumber is treated too. So. Yeah, hopefully these last a long time. We have proof of what Gary is doing. That's right. Everybody needs an inspector and a shovel leaner.
those guys are augering holes, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what's made this take so long. I'm not gonna bash any companies here. If you've done extensive work with contractors, builders, any of that stuff, you know that good ones are hard to come by. So the company that I originally ordered all the materials through was also the same company that was supposed to come in and put the building up for me. And they came in, they, they had a nice sales pitch. I liked them, they said they had better materials, which I still believe they do have better materials. But uh, after a while, well, first of all, they rushed me to get the dirt work in. And that's why at the beginning of this series, I was saying that we had to scramble and get all this done. After I get the dirt in, I finally call them and say, hey, we're ready to go, ready, the site's ready. They tell me, well, my building crew quit. Where's that leave me? So they tell me if I can, find somebody else to build, put it up. So I do. And then after the, about a week, they call me and say, hey, we got a crew together. We're gonna come put your building up. So, well, I already hired a different crew. So the different crew was working me into their schedule. So I was already a few weeks behind from that. And then weather and uh, a few life events which I completely understand, kept them from coming out as quickly as was first intended. But all that aside, we're past it now. The building is going up and it's not snow on the ground yet, so I'm happy with it. Boy, would you just look at that. Would you just look at it? That is real, 100% genuine progress on the dream shop here, finally. And just to clarify, I've had a few people kind of say, oh, you're calling this your dream shop, but man, I, I figured you'd want something a lot bigger and better. I mean, of course I would. I'm only calling this dream shop because it's a realistic dream shop. Contrary, contrary to what some of those spammy videos on YouTube might have you know, I'm not a millionaire paying for this all out of pocket. So it's realistic. It's not, uh, it's not over the top here. The footprint of the building is gonna be 40 by 80. And look at, look at how nice and true they got these walls going on here. Look at that. The footprint of the building is going to be 40 by 80 and you see how there's a big gap here between these two posts that's not framed out for a door. This back half, not back half, but back part here, but from that post to this post is going to be a big open air porch that goes underneath here. So the main roof is going to extend out over this whole thing. The main roof will be 40 by 80. And then this is 16 between these posts. And then from this corner up to the very front there, we're gonna enclose that whole thing. We're gonna enclose that whole thing. We're gonna have three 14 by 14 doors coming into this thing. We're gonna have heated floors. We're gonna have insulation in the walls. It's gonna be great. And then eventually, we're gonna have that overhead crane that I bought at the auction. And we're gonna have that so that it runs the length of the enclosed portion of the building.
end of day two here actually starting to look like a building now today they got everything framed in with all the purlins which are these two by sixes running across right here and they got the headers on for the trusses which are the lvls at the top there they got all their blocking on ready to accept the trusses tomorrow everything is starting to take shape they also got the garage doors on the front of the building framed out there that's two 14 by 14 garage doors that's going to be really nice we'll be able to get anything in here that's the end of day two though tomorrow they're going to set all the trusses on and then they're going to start framing out there's a lean to that's going to go from this corner to this corner and i think it's 16 or 18 feet out 12 foot high yeah it's going to be awesome we're going to have so much room under here Well, they were going to set trusses first thing this morning, but we had some rain last night, so we're going to start framing up the lean-to. guys are quick man they drilled the holes and before I know it they turn around they have the post already dropped in here gonna have a lean-to on this thing before we know it Here we go, these guys are picking up the first gable end truss here. We're gonna start slamming some trusses. Getting exciting.
one shot. That wasn't her, that was the catcher. <laughs> you got the right guy for the job. Well, we had to put the big dirty hoe to work here. She's doubling as a man basket at the moment. But she fits in the shop pretty nicely. Can't complain about that. All right, look at that. It's getting pretty late. Those guys got a long drive home, so they took off for the night. But I think tomorrow they're going to have all the siding finished up, probably. Not a whole lot left to do here. Man, this is looking good. Really, really liking that color combination there. Starting to look like a building.
Look at that, huh? We got this whole side done. Looking good. Feels like we're coming down the home stretch now. They got the soffit and the fascia done on this end. The gable's done. Oh yeah. Looking good now. You know, when you do a project like this and you plan it for so long, th this building's been in my head for probably 10 years or more now. And uh, standing here actually looking at it in person, it's a good feeling. Are you guys ready to see this thing? Oh, this is gonna be so great. Boom, shop. As you guys know, this has been a long, long journey to get here, and I couldn't be more thrilled with the outcome. Now I hear what you're saying, but Matt, but Matt, there's, there's, there's no back wall yet. It's just wide open. What are you gonna do there? Well, the construction crew just left, and they will return once the concrete floor is in. So the guys that put up the shell of the building here are not the guys that'll do the concrete floor. I have a different crew coming for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put in six inch thick concrete floor, fiber reinforced, and I'm gonna be putting insulation board underneath of that with PEX tubing run all through the floor. And I'm gonna have a heated floor that we're gonna eventually connect to an outdoor wood boiler.
after the floor is done, we're then gonna have the building crew come back in and they're gonna frame off a stick built wall back here, not a post style wall like the rest of the building is. Because if I want to expand in the future and enclose this back 16 foot of overhang here, I'll literally be able to disconnect the wall from the framework, slide the wall out to the end here, re-secure it, and then we'll have another 16 by 40 added right onto the building with probably minimal work, I would imagine. So when the concrete out here is poured, it's going to be the same exact grade. It's going to have just the slightest little pitch to it so that any water doesn't collect under it right now um, because it's not closed in yet. But the pitch is going to be so minor that it won't matter. If I close it in, it's not going to affect anything. So the building stats here. The building itself is 40 by 80, the entire roof. The entire footprint of the building is 40 by 80. 64 feet of it, you can see where the siding is. That's the part that's going to be enclosed after we get that back wall framing all off. So 64 feet is going to be enclosed and I am leaving this 16 foot overhang here. You can see where the skid steer is parked at right now. That's going to be open air for um, storage or if I'm doing a lot of heavy cutting and grinding and welding and you know, you got a lot of fumes and stuff, we're going to be able to work under a roof and still have protection from the elements a bit and uh, not be putting all that smoke and dirty, dusty nastiness into the building. So that's going to be good. We're getting six inch gutters put on yet and downspouts all be color matched. So I'll actually end up, if you count the gutter in, I'll end up with an 18 inch overhang all the way around the building. Well, not the gable ends, but the, the sides. When all is said and done, there will be three 14 by 14 bay doors here. This one is going to be a dead bay. This one is going to have a matching door directly at the other end of the building. So you'll be able to drive straight through and loop around the building with something long like a trailer or whatever. I don't even remember what the lean-to came out to be exactly because I just told him to uh, buy 20 foot material and make it as wide as we could. So I think we wound up somewhere around 17 feet at the overhang, um, which is great. So I have 17 by 64 foot here. I've got an overhang on this and I'll be able to keep stuff tucked in there out of the weather when it doesn't really need to be in the shop taking up space. And I think this thing turned out fantastic. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. I really like the way this looks. Another thing I'm considering doing in the future here is I'm going to take two of these cells on the lean-to and probably close them all in and tie it into the building, put a floor in there and everything, and actually add a bathroom and make it kind of a parts room slash bathroom slash storage room. Um, bumped out from the side of the building under the lean-to here. That way I'm not wasting good overhead space here because we have 18 feet to the bottom of the rafter and they're scissor trusses so I think we're close to 20, 22 feet I think at the peak. I'm really excited about this. I keep saying it but this is opening up so many possibilities and gonna make my life so much nicer when working on stuff. So I actually have a guy from a spray foam company on the way right now. He's coming out to give me a quote. I'm going to have spray foam put on the entire ceiling. We're gonna leave the rafters open, but we are gonna put metal on the walls. So it'll be uh, nice and smooth. We won't have to worry about if we're shooting sparks at the walls or anything, we won't have to worry about uh, setting the place on fire. And uh, yeah, it, it's gonna be nice once this is all insulated. So after so many comments, it's good to actually see this thing sitting here. I was getting bombarded in every video with comments of, what about your shop? What happened to your shop? Are you putting it off? Are you putting it off? No. The first contractor that was supposed to show up and build this thing uh, didn't. Long story short, there's a bunch of drama involved. I don't like drama. I'm not gonna share drama with you guys, but long story short, I found somebody else to put up the building. 
because I was asking this person to step into a role that they were not with from the beginning. Contractors don't like to do that. They don't want to walk into somebody else's mess and pick up the pieces. It's, uh, it makes their lives much more difficult and can create drama for them as well. So I don't blame most contractors for just saying, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not touching that. You already started it with this other company. We don't want to do that. So I got a hold of Edgel Construction and they came out and ended up putting up the building for me and they've done a great job. I can't complain about that. There were some issues regarding materials, and again, that all comes part and parcel of stepping into somebody else's project. The people that were gonna put it up originally, the people that ordered all the materials, they don't build buildings identical to the way that these guys normally did. So there was a little bit of guesswork, and well, maybe this is what we're supposed to use for this and that, and I don't know, I'm not a builder. I mean, we could just speculate. All I could do was tell them what I wanted, and we made it happen, so. Long story short, at the end of the day, here's the building. To save some money, I'm not paying somebody to do what I can do. I'm going to do all the prep work in here myself. I gotta grade out the floor again, make sure it's nice and true. And we're gonna have to lay down some gravel and we're gonna have to put some insulation board in and PEX tubing for in-floor heat. But before I can get to any of that, I need to dig and pour some piers for the crane system that I want to put in this building. That is my biggest concern right now. I went with flat bottom trusses out here because I figured that would give it a more finished look at the end here. I thought it would be kind of weird if we went with a scissor truss all the way out to the end and closed it in. Um, and in my mind, it also gives a little more stability out here since we only have two posts, but an engineer might tell me that I'm not exactly correct on that one. But there's the machine for scale. That machine's actually seven foot tall, and you can see it, uh, it doesn't look very big in this building. And of course, I wish I could have gone bigger still, you know, no matter how big you build it, it's never quite big enough, but I think this will suffice. I'm gonna have more than enough storage in the future here. I'm working on some other things just to get me some more equipment sheds, lean-tos kind of things to get things out of the weather. This building here is really only going to be for working. If it's not a project that needs active maintenance, repair, work, restoration, whatever, it shouldn't be in here. The only thing I might keep in here is anything that needs to be climate controlled uh, because the building will be heated. And I'm even considering doing some air conditioning in the future here. Might have to price that all out. Anyways, guys, that's the shop. I'm gonna end this video right here because I need to jump in that skid steer and start doing some concrete prep. I know that this has been a long time coming and I had built it up and then ended up stalling out over the summer trying to get another builder lined up and in here. But as you can see, it's finally here. So thanks for sticking around and hanging in there. Trust me, nobody wanted to see this thing up more than I did. Um, I'm just glad I'm able to get it up, hopefully, and have it sealed off before the snow's flying here. That was my main goal and my main concern. I don't want to spend another winter working in the cold if I don't have to. So if you like the video, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. If you want to help support the channel, head on over to dieselcreek.com and pick yourself up some sweet new merch. I have all new fall merch coming in. It's so new that I don't even have it yet. That's why you don't see me wearing it. But we have all of our regular stuff. We have hats, t-shirts, koozies. Now we have hoodies. We have pocket t-shirts. We have long sleeve t-shirts. And we got some new stickers over in the store. So if you haven't been over there yet, head on over there, check it out, pick yourself up some sweet new merch and uh, get geared up for the winter. That's all I've got for now. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Later.